Have you ever had a refrigerator that was dripping from the freezer on top down to the inside refrigerator area? Well, this is how you fix it. It's actually really easy. And I've been doing this for years. I used to professionally uh, fix appliances. This is a symptom of any refrigerator. Uh, it's super easy to fix. Uh, so again, the situation is um, there's an issue in the freezer, but your symptom is you're getting water in the fridge. Like, there's water on top of my eggs. So the situation up here that's causing that, um, this is the evaporator. This is the part that gets cold. There's a fan that blows air across it so that it chills the air inside your refrigerator. And the humidity uh, builds up on the surface of this thing and it will actually freeze up between these little vents and it can't pass air anymore and it doesn't work. So um, you've got a timer down here in the central unit somewhere and it will divert energy from the compressor system to this electric heater system that is controlled by this thermostat um, about every eight hours, three times a day. And it will basically just get hot enough to, to melt all the ice that's built up in here. And it goes and drains down this hole. This is actually a drain that goes all the way to the bottom of the unit. Um, the water goes into a pan that's next to the compressor and when the compressor runs the heat will cause the water to evaporate so you don't have to manually get rid of the water. Um, what happens is, as you can see here, for some reason my light turned off. Let me see if I can fix that. There we go. Um, you can see this is built up with ice. This drain hole right here um, is blocked with, with ice. Um, and so the, it just gets like a pea or some other kind of frozen food or or even just um, m even mildew or whatever down further on the line. And then this builds up with ice and bam, there's nowhere for the water to go except down into your refrigerator through the vents that, that pass cold air to your fridge. And if you have a side-by-side, -side, because there's no refrigerator underneath, you're just going to see this stuff coming out on your floor. And so every day you'll see like a tiny puddle and it'll evaporate almost as fast as it comes out. And so you'll think there's a leak in your door from like the water dispenser on the front and you'll be looking everywhere in the cabinet and looking for some kind of weird leak or whatever. No, it's, it's this problem. And it's coming out of the front of... Uh, gr gross. Gross! <laughs> um, uh, okay. Um, it's coming out the front of your door, and it's just getting right past that seal, and what comes out on your floor, and the, yeah, it's easy, free fix. This is it. And so all you have to do is um, take all the covers off, take all the fit out of the fridge, you know, obviously, take all the covers off the back and the floor. They're only held in with these little screws, and if you have an ice maker, you need to look up instructions on how to take that out, and just take something like this, just a cheap butter knife, and kind of carefully, you know, this pan is only thin aluminum, so you don't want to bend it, so it'll, so it'll leak forever. Uh, but you just want to work it in there. You see, you just break it up. And once you break it up, and you take all the pieces out, and you toss them in the sink. And don't forget to clean all this area up, too. You don't want to just leave that behind. I'm actually glad we're exploring in here today, because I didn't realize this was in here. Oh, oh and, this, and this is in here, too. All right, there goes the evening. And I'm gonna show you the super secret upgrade that makes sure that this doesn't happen so frequently and potentially could solve it forever. Um, but you, you guys don't even know. You don't even know about the free fridge upgrade. Oh, today's your lucky day. I know your first reaction is gonna be, all right, let's get the paper towels out, let's wipe all this stuff up, let's make it nice and dry, but don't do that yet. You're just gonna waste your time. We gotta do this part first. This is the solution to your problem. What you do, Take your old turkey baster, and this is some hot water. You gotta use hot water. So run it in your bathroom sink or whatever until it gets good and hot. Fill this up. I've already cleared out all the ice on top, but there is ice inside that hole still. I think you can see it in the camera. And there is water on top too, so you gotta squeeze the hot water down in that tube. See how it melted the ice right there? Pick up some more hot water. And hopefully third time's a charm. And that did it. There it is. 
see nice and clear um, the pan down there is not too big but go ahead and take some extra water make sure it's hot still put it down there see it's, it's flowing nice and clear that's what you want now you guys ready Whoa. Did you guys hear that? Something was in the line and it actually dropped out in the pan right there. So make sure you give it a good flush. That's probably why mine keeps doing this about every about every six to eight months. All right, nice clean floor. Make sure you don't leave a bunch of ice. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be totally clean, but um, you just don't want to leave a lot down there because it'll absorb a smell from the freezer. Then your freezer smells because the ice stinks and it's underneath the floor, so you can't easily get to it. So um, do a pretty good job. You're not going to believe this, but this, the key to the long-term solution is just a paper clip. So all you have to do is go find yourself a paper clip from the office drawer or wherever you steal them from, and uh, you straighten it out. Well, I should say you straighten all of them except for that last small inner bend like that. And then you take this guy. Try not to touch the heater itself with your fingers because there's oil on your hands uh, that can shorten the life of the heater. But you take this thing and you just carefully oh, this rotated on me. Just carefully, please don't touch it. There. Just put that just like that. And um, from now on, when the circuit is switched over to this heater and it's being powered, then some of that heat will be conducted down to the drain. And so if there is ice forming in this area, then all of a sudden you get a little bit of heat and it will help you with that. You know what, this isn't staying on here well, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna increase the, the radius of this bend so that it, it can actually hang on there, kind of like a shepherd's crook. All you do is uh, take your Sharpie that you also stole from the office, purely out of boredom, and you wrap your paper clip around it so that it has a little bit bigger of a diameter. And you take your clip, again, not your clip, it was before, now it's just going to loosely hang on there. Remember not to touch the heater. And there. Just loosely hang in there just like that. That way if ice starts building up in this area, you've got some heat coming into, uh, into the drain hole. And from my understanding, it works pretty well. If you don't have a paper clip and you're interested in using something like this, um, that's on you. I, I've never tried it. I, I was eyeballing it because I thought maybe the paper clip was a little bit too thin to transfer enough heat. Um, this is this is the trick I was taught by the old timers. You know, this is on you if you want to try it. Just make sure you don't put the head down in the hole because then you'll reduce the flow that you have and, and another surface to build ice up on. And when you're putting everything back together and you go to put the back panel on, do not forget to secure this green ground wire to your metal panel. That's a safety feature so that if the power circuit ever gets grounded to this metal panel, and um, that could happen, right? then it'll cause a short to ground, trip your circuit breaker, and that way power won't come to the fridge anymore, and that's just how it works. If you don't have this, this back panel is electrified, so have fun with that, because as soon as you touch it, and then you touch anything grounded, say with your feet, then, um, you know, you're gonna feel it. So that happened to me when I was like nine years old on an RV. I had a light outside on the door and a handle that you'd you know, reach up, grab it, there's a little like push button for the light and the light was built into the handle, but the handle wasn't properly grounded and I was standing in a water puddle because it had just rained. So don't find yourself in a water puddle. Hook that back up. Mine also happens to have these um, styrofoam ducts that carry the air from the freezer or the cooling unit down into the fridge. Um, don't break these, and this is not just packing material, you got to put these back. There's only one cooling unit for the whole machine, so this is where the air uh, gets into the refrigerator after it's been chilled. Unless you have a super nice commercial size machine like a Sub-Zero, there's only one chilled unit behind this wall. It blows air down here. There's only one thermostat, which is in the fridge, and whatever temperature exists in here is assumed to be okay and assumed to be below freezing, and that's how your fridge works. So if you don't hook up or replace these and they, they're not in proper condition, then you're not going to get airflow to the fridge. You're going to be super chilling your freezer, running your fridge too long, burning up the compressor, just burning extra money on your energy bill. So 
yeah, these are not just packing. You need to put those back. That brown ectoplasm's gone, and it looks like the Narnia cabinet actually produced a lot more goodies. It's gonna be a long night. And, uh, I think, I think I might need some help. One of the reasons that mine messes up so frequently is because this fridge doesn't run very efficiently. First of all, it's very old. Um, it survived major reconstruction inside this house while it had to run, suck up all kinds of dust in the cooling, um, breathing system or, or heat rejection system, you might call it. Um, so this fridge, you know, it's been through a lot. It runs more than your, your typical fridge would. And because of that, this system is cycling pretty much constantly or nearly constantly. And that means there's more of an opportunity for things to get clogged up in that drain. So most of you are not going to have as reoccurring of an issue as I do. But I wanted to show you, um, there must be a coolant line or maybe a, a, a high pressure line that runs through this area of the fridge and you can feel it, it's actually really hot, especially along here. And so I got my thermal camera out. Look at that. That just That's all inefficient operation. That tells you that somewhere else where heat is supposed to be rejected, it's not being rejected. And so it's trying to get it out any way it can. The lines are usually covered with you know insulation inside the cabinet of the machine pretty thoroughly. So this must be where that line comes closest to the surface and it's pretty freaking hot so um you know you got you guys just uh learn a lesson but don't worry about it quite as much as i have to worry about this actually i just found two fingers of moonshine here oh he's just a little guy uh, you know, hey come here personal fat kid tip if you're anywhere near trader joe's pick up the uh, pork gyoza or pork pot stickers whatever you want to call them these are the best ones, the other one is not, or they're just not as good. And then, um, oh, where's the other thing? If you have a Costco membership, you're thinking about getting a Costco membership, these plant-based chicken breasts from uh, Skinny Butcher, shockingly good, like, legitimately shockingly good. They were giving out samples. I tried some super crunchy crispy on the outside, and so I bought some, and um, they're really good out of the air fryer, but you really get that texture by baking them. They are a little more dry out of the oven, um, but, you know, Pick which one's important to you. They didn't sell me a soggy box. This is just because it was at the bottom of the sink while I was working on the freezer. All right, well, that's it. Hope your fridge is fixed. Now you know that I have a weird shaped ice cube tray addiction. And, uh, you know, hope you save some money and you can impress your friends when they have a problem. Like, subscribe, frozen bacon fat. Everybody, have a good day.